up guys, this your boy, Barcelona boy 103 just finished watching the match and Barcelona beat Napoli 3-1 at a beautiful, electric, jam-packed out Monjuic Stadium at, of course, Luz Ocampos. Unbelievable. Uh, I have one word to summarize this game. Chavi Masterclass. There's a reason why the fans were chanting Chavi's name in that game. Xavi Hernandez, lo, 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 Xavi Hernandez, unbelievable. Now we're going to go through the game, of course. Uh, the starting lineup was a big surprise as well with Fermin Lopez starting. It was Ter Stegen in goal, a back four of Kunde, Arojo, Kubarsi, 17 years old, gaining the nod ahead of the experience, Inigo Martinez, Joel Cancelo at left back. Double pivot midfield two, you could say, of Christensen and Gundogan, Rafinha on the left-hand side, Fermin in the middle in the 10, Lamin Yamal on the right, and Lewandowski up front, again, the big call from Xavi was starting Lamin Yamal ahead of Joao Felix. And it was absolutely correct. Yeah, I'm thinking before the game, it's a ballsy move. I respect it. Fermin Lopez, keep in mind, past two games has been shite. Mallorca, poor Bill Bao at the San Mamez put one of the worst cameos I've seen this season from a player in that game. He's coming this game and he was great. For, in the first 15 minutes, should have had a hat trick. He missed two big chances, got the goal, of course, in the end. The first goal came from a beautiful, beautiful build up play between Kubarsi, Cancelo, Rafinha. Rafinha then gets in behind, puts the cross in. Lewandowski dummies it. Fermin Lopez, 1v1 with the keeper, wide open, puts it into the back of the net. Second goal was a counter attack. I think Lamen Yamal started off, found Rafinha, who went down the left hand side, cuts inside, shoots off the post, and of course, Cancelo with the rebound. Third goal by Lewandowski was beautiful, beautiful build play as well. From the throw in, Roberto then made the two different moves, passing two players, finds Gunduan. Gunduan threads Roberto a beautiful pass with Roberto making the run, sweats it to Lewandowski, taps it into the open net. In regards to how Barcelona played in this game, you could say that we survived a little bit. I think that first half an hour, despite Napoli, I think having maybe one or two chances, absolutely dominated the game from possession controlling the game intensity tempo pressure everything pinpoint beautiful barcelona there are people tweeting at, at in the, during that 30 minutes people were tweeting they're booking their trips to wembley and booking their trips to the london it was that good from the 30th minute i would say maybe 29th minute just before napoli got their goal until halftime we were on the ropes i was saying in the live stream just get to half time with the clean sheet qualification guaranteed and you're done and we concede immediately. Beautiful build-up play from Napoli for their goal. We just missed the midfield runner of Rahmani. I think he ran past Gundogan and Christensen. It was a poor goal to concede. And then we start the second half. I, I was shitting myself. We were so, so bad. We did not reach the final third of Napoli. Like, their area, their box. Until, like, the 52nd, 53rd minute. We spent the first 10 minutes defending for our lives. It was shocking. And what changed it, of course? Chavi's substitutions on paper bring on Roberto and Romeo isn't glamorous but it controlled the game slow the game down despite Romeo putting in an absolutely shocking performance overall that first 10 minutes of those subs being made calmed everything down gave Barcelona that extra energy in the midfield set the tempo a bit more Christian was kind of limping since the first uh, minute of course and for Min Lopez like I mentioned he played all right got a goal but wasn't as decisive as we expected from Fermin. The Fermin from, you know, that was starting El Clasico back in October, it wasn't that Fermin Lopez. And again, the goal was well taken to him, credit to him. Once those subs being made, the game got a bit even. Of course, Napoli missed a big, big chance. Lindstrom at the far post heads it wide. We did, of course, I think score with Lemon Yamal that was offside. Then we got our goal. After the goal, we just kind of went to the motions. I think Oliveira hit the bard. Uh, Kevin had a decent chance as well that he put wide. But after that, it was just crew sailing for Barcelona. I am over the moon, ladies and gentlemen. I knew we were going to qualify tonight. I had that feeling. I think the main reason for that is the second leg being at home. You look at Barcelona over the last 10 years in the Champions League, out of all of our eliminations since the 2015 treble, it's all because we played the second leg away. I think we played the second leg at home against uh, Juventus in the 2016-17 season, where we drew nil-nil, trying to make you know, Remontada 2.0. Apart from that, they've all been away from home, and that's where we struggled. Having that home court advantage, home field advantage, is important, and we need that for Friday as well. Make sure you guys subscribe, by the way. Gonna okay, be doing the live draw for the uh, Champions League quarterfinals. I'm going to be fasting. It's going to be difficult, but I'm going to be there. Join it, of course. It's going to be crazy. We need to get the home draw advantage. Having the second leg at home just is so, 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 so beneficial and that's going to be very very key now let's review the game player ratings firstly Ter Stegen in goal probably give him an average i would say 6.5 
out of 10. I think the reason why I didn't give him a 7 was because of his distribution out from the back. Holy shite. I don't think Ter Stegen completed up one ball over the top. He was woeful with his long pass today. Dreadful giving the ball away every single time. Did make two big saves though in this game in the first half. I think both of the big saves he made were offside in the end. Of course, that one that led to the corner kick uh, from the header. That was a good save as well. But in terms of shot stopping, definitely a 7, 7.5 out of 10. On the ball, though, was poor. So I'll probably give him an average 6, 6.5 out of 10. Right back. Right back. Jules Koundé. This remontada of Koundé has been astonishing. It has gone under the radar a lot. Of course, uh, Koundé was probably one of the best center backs of the world at the start of the season. Goes down injured, came back, looks shite. Since mid-January, he has been unreal. He's now played both games. First of all, he's played every single minute of every single game in 2024. Against Napoli in both legs. Had to deal with one of the best left wingers in the world, especially on recent form. Kavicia Kavarskelia. Absolutely pocketed him in both games. Both games. Jules Koundé, unbelievable today for me. I'd give him an 8 out of 10. I thought he was absolutely solid, especially when he's getting, you know, crappy passes from Arujo, Ter Stegen in dangerous areas. Always wins a Barcelona throw in. Uh, you know, manages to connect a pass along to either Lamen Yamal or Fermin Lopez. Absolutely brilliant today from Jules Kunde. Superb from him. Arujo probably give him a 7. I think, again, a bit of a sloppy passes from him here and there. He's kind of the defender that kind of just hoofs it along every time we're in like a sticky situation, which again is understandable. So that's uh, fair enough to him. I think he defended well, dealt with Oshiman in some difficult areas. Uh, probably give him a 7 out of 10. Kubarsi. This man is 17 years old. When I was 17, I was watching Barcelona win the treble. And now, I'm watching another 17-year-old start for Barcelona. It is unbelievable what he does. I think what needs to be studied about Kubarsi is his composure. His composure is absolutely redonkulous. Looked superb today. Had some crazy challenges against uh, Victor Oshiman that looked absolutely pinpoint clean. That he's been like in playing in the Champions League for like 10 years now. His passing was unbelievable. Of course, he's the one who started, of course, to play for the first goal. So, so good, man. 17. And he's now, he's so good that we're probably going to have to end up selling some center back as well. Whether it's going to be Mikhail Fay, Longlet, Eric Garcia, might even be uh, Kirshensen as well. He is that good. Indigo Martinez might see himself leave the club this summer because of the, the emergence of Kubarsi. It is unbelievable what this man is doing at 17. I think what he's doing is on par with what Laman Yamal is doing as well. It just isn't talked about that much. So, 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 so good. I think on recent form, he's definitely top 15, top 10 center backs in the world of what he's doing right now. Unbelievable from him. 8 out of 10 from me. Left back. I think the reason why he's better than Aroha, by the way, the passing ability, of course, in decisive areas and moments in this game. Left back, Cancelo. I might be a bit controversial here, but I'm going to give him, you know, like a 6, 6.5 out of 10. Yes, he got the goal. Fair enough to him. But he was getting done in behind so many times. He could never track the midfield runner and the late runner in behind him as well. Old Napoli chances came at the far post on Cancelo's side because he's too busy hoofing up along trying to, you know, start an attack and not tracking back to defend. I think on the ball wasn't too bad. Lincoln play with the midfield uh, was good as well. But just again, the defensive aspect of this game today really, really bothered me. It really sticked out with Napoli getting all their chances on Cancelo's side. But of course, got the goal credit to him as well. But probably give him a 6.5 out of 10. Christensen, probably give him a 6 out of 10 as well. Kind of just did his job to be fair to him. Won some balls in the midfield. Looked a bit ropey in some moments, giving the ball away to the lead. Kind of looked a bit slower. There's a lot of moments where I'm thinking like, okay, Christian's going to get to this ball, but then either Kubarsi overtakes him and wins it, or Gundogan comes and takes it from him. Like, he looked fairly slow in this game. I don't know if he had some sort of niggling injury. He did get he did how uh, he was limping in the first minute or so, but hopefully he's fine. Uh, so probably give him a 6 out of 10. Gundogan, probably give him a 7, 8 out of 10, probably 7.5. I think he was brilliant as well, especially in those pocketed spaces. I think he looked really, really good once Fermin Lopez came off, and he went into his more natural, advanced midfield position. I think when he plays, you know, beside Christensen, he's kind of just doing a job for the sake of it, I think he's much more better, of course, in that advanced role. And we know that when we have the likes of Pedri and uh, Frankie Young to kind of do that dirty work that he's doing now uh, in those advanced positions. But I think once he went in that advanced position, when uh, Fermin Lopez went off, it looked really good. Of course, in those first few minutes, I think he, he was solid as well. Uh, Rafinha probably gave him an average six. I would say the first half, he was probably a solid eight. Second half was probably a solid five. <laughs> and that's what you get with Rafinha. He's just been up and down this season. I think, again, everything up until the final third, was brilliant from him, link up play wise, making those runs, defensive work rate as well. This is the reason why he probably started ahead of Joel Face because of that defensive aspect of his game. So credit to him in that regards, although it is kind of coming as a standard nowadays. 
The city of making for Rafinha is just beyond shocking and it still is. We're now March the 12th. We've been crying about his decision making since September and nothing has changed. He's, you know, the sloppy passes to Lewandowski, the ones where he over hits it and then under hits it when he shoots, he sort of pass it. When he passes, he sort of shoots. It's just hurts my brain sometimes. But that first half an hour, silkiness, absolute silkiness. For Min Lopez, honestly, I'd probably, based on the performance, give him a 7 out of 10. I think in that first 20 minutes, he was getting in behind a lot. Had a lot of good chances, licking up well. Uh, should have had at least a brace, in my opinion, but still got the goal as well. So credit to him. I think that second half, with the first 15 minutes before Chavi took him off, looked pretty sloppy as well. So, I mean, it is what it is for him. Uh, on the left, of course, or sorry, on the right was Lamin Yamal. Probably could give him a 7 as well. I think... He played so well to the point that if he scored a goal, I probably would have given him a 9. I mean, he was unreal, especially in that opening 15-20 minutes against Mario Rui. Dealt with him superbly well. Uh, I think he kind of had, I think he was a bit quiet for like the half an hour mark until like the hour mark. And once the space kind of opened up a bit and he started getting a lot more balls on that right hand side, who's making the move. Against, of course, his goal against Mallorca, he had that same attempt about three times in this game. All of them just wide, like it just, and sometimes he'd like be open in space. He just, you know, hits it at meta, the goalkeeper. Just needs to t fine tweak that a little bit. And he's absolutely golden. Of course, got a goal that was offside as well. But probably gave him a 7 out of 10. Finally, Lewandowski probably... I would have given him a 6 without the goal. So I'm going to give him a 6.5 with the goal scored as well. I think he was kind of not playing the graveyard shift. But kind of playing the dummy shift. In the sense that he's kind of there to occupy spaces for the center back. His hold-up play was basically non-existent in this game either. It was very, very sloppy in those... Um, long balls, like kind of hoop balls from Kubarsi and Aruha when they were kind of in danger, when they're all kind of coming towards him. Failed to control it most of the times. His runs in behind were fairly slow as well, where we're kind of blistering on the counter attack with Rafinha on the left, Lemignum on the right. Lewandowski's is like right back here, trying to go salvage a counter attack. He was a bit slow in that sense, but got a goal. I think he kind of did the dirty work a lot for Barcelona in the sense of those, you know, occupying the spaces, kind of making the dummy runs and things of that nature. That's something that you, that you don't see. Um, on and off the ball. So credit to him as well. Uh, substitutions. I think who came in? Roberto Romeo. Was that it? Joao Felix came in. Um, I think that was it. Three cells from Xavi to be fair to him. I mean, that's a bit uh, low in that regard. So I'm trying to remember just to make sure. Nothing changed in the back five. Uh, Romeo, uh, Roberto, Joao Felix. Yeah, that was it. So three subs. I think Joao Felix came in last, you know, 10 minutes. Didn't really do anything. Romeo was woeful. I mean, the first seven minutes, he looked okay. But since we got, since Napoli were kind of pressuring and stuff, he gave the ball away a lot in the midfield. I mean, just bit him in the summer as soon as possible. Roberto came in, had some energy. I was quite skeptical of that substitution because, you know, he has not played a single minute of football since we got knocked out of the Copa del Rey back at the end of January. He's been fit now for about uh, two or three weeks, but has not come on whatsoever. His first minutes, I was a bit worried about that. But Chavi, of course, knows more than I do. So, in regards to finally Chavi, uh, in terms of his manager rating, I'm giving him a perfect 10 out of 10. Um, yes, we could have kept a clean sheet. Yes, we could have scored more goals. But the objective today was to walk away and qualify for the next round. And we did that. And Chavi did that basically on his tactics alone. Starting for Min was not even a question coming into this game. Everyone's thinking, okay, Joao Felix on the left. It's going to be either Rafinha or Lamen Yamal on the right. Maybe Rafinha in the midfield and either Kubarsi or Inigo at center back. Those were kind of the two or three decisions that, that, that had to be made. Him starting Fermin Lopez was just straight cojones. After Fermin Lopez's two poor games against Mallorca and Athletic Club as well. That came in to be the absolutely correct decision with Fermin Lopez's runs and decisiveness and work rate being so important. The tactical change at the hour mark of Romeo and Roberto coming in to bring that midfield some balance despite the personnel on paper not being so great so to speak, everything today came down to Chavi. And it was a Chavi masterclass tactically wise to get Barcelona the qualification in this game and credit where it's due. I've seen a lot of hate about Chavi recently. Chavi out, Chavi this, and you know, him not being a good manager absolutely shuts everyone down today. The tactical awareness from himself as well to put Rafinha on the left, where Rafinha has been shocking on the left since joining Barcelona. This is his first okay game at the left wing since joining Barcelona Rafinha. The, I thought you would maybe see Fermin on the left, uh, Rafinha in the interior, and Lamin Yamal on the right with Gundogan and Christensen in behind. But no, it was Gundogan and Christensen in behind. Fermin Lopez in the middle, Rafinha on the left, and then Lamin Yamal on the right. That was even more crazy to me than him starting Fermin Lopez to get go. And again, that tactical substitution at the hour mark, bringing in Romeo and Roberto, so, so important. That was probably the reason why we had the energy to go and push for that third goal as well and end up qualifying. Overall, super, super happy, of course. I... Not gonna say never in doubt, you're going in two and a half time, you're thinking bloody hell, we're making it more difficult for ourselves, but I'm so, 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 so happy 
with the performance overall and of course more importantly the result but of course in the comments down below let me know your thoughts on the match your player ratings your manager rating your thoughts on the performance as well and of course make sure you guys subscribe down below as well if you haven't already and i will see you guys next time on the channel i'll see you guys friday for the uh, champions league draw for the quarterfinals i will be there and hopefully you will join me there as well take care and force a barca <laughs>